Come spring, California's public school students will be assessed with a new Smarter Balance test based on Common Core standards. Joining me with details about the test, new discipline guidelines, and the district's new Quality Assurance Center is my guest, San Diego Unified Superintendent Cindy Martin. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, Cindy, briefly remind us of what these Common Core uh, standards are and when the district actually implemented them. We actually started last year when the state suspended the California state standards and the CST test we were able to fully transition to the Common Core state standards and California is one of the states that signed on to the Common Core state standards and we invested 22 million dollars from the state of California in transitioning to the Common Core M the bulk of that money is going to professional development to make sure teachers are ready to teach Common Core. And, and real briefly, Common Core means what to math and English and to the students? It's the math and English standards, and there's still the basic skills that kids need to learn. There's a lot. What we're working on this year is demystifying that. People think, oh, it's a new way of doing math. No, two and two is still four. Kids still need to decode and they need to read, but it's about thinking critically around the reading text. Let's say that you're reading and answering questions, being able to make a claim defend that claim, have multiple perspectives and points of view and reason and, and have um, critical discourse. And how is this new Smarter Balance as it's cost, this assessment uh, test, how does it differ from uh, the test done previously? The old test, the California Standards Test, was a simple, old-fashioned bubble in with it. here's one question and there's four multiple choice and you pick the right answer. The Smarter Balance assessment that we'll be using is called a performance-based assessment and so you're able to do constructed response where you're going to do some writing. It's not just bubble in one answer. It's looking at a series of questions and saying what would be the best answer to this question? This one, this one, and this one, and then explain your reasoning. Why is this answer a better answer than that one? And you have to be able to explain your thinking, not just, mm, I think it's B, and not have to tell why you think the answer is B. And I understand this is done also on computers yes. and tablets. So uh, as far as parents' concerns over the kind of technological gap, what, what are you doing to address San that? San Diego Unified is in great shape about that. I want parents to not worry. Fortunately, as a second largest district we invested heavily in technology we invested heavily in professional development over the last several years so we are more common core ready I would say that some districts that don't have the technology our kids are technology natives with our I-21 program they were able to take a sample test last year that didn't count so they could experience testing in that computer environment and we don't want our students for the first time they take a high stakes test that's the first time they lay their hands on a computer that wouldn't work for us and that's that's not what's happening in San Diego because we've been so technologically savvy. And what are you telling parents as far as I know there's been some uh, comments about are the teachers prepared in order to teach this Common Core because it's moving very quickly. Uh, parents have said that. Well if there was some sort of magic pill or certain uh, curriculum I could just buy it and give it to a teacher and say now you're Common Core ready. There's not a magic wand to that. I want our parents to know we've invested heavily in teachers professional development. They have ongoing PLC which I know sounds like jar jargon. It's professional learning communities where teachers work collaboratively collaboratively in grade level teams, unpacking the standards, designing a lesson for the standards, and then teaching. And let's move on to, you have a new uh, quality assurance center in the district. What yeah. is that and who's it for? Well, we're making a promise. The Board of Education is delivering on a quality school in every neighborhood. You've heard us talk about that when it came last year. Our vision 2020 is about neighborhood schools being of the highest quality. We've defined quality based on our 12 indicators. Anytime we fall short of delivering a quality education, we want the public to have a place to go. If you physically go to the Quality Assurance Office or call the Quality Assurance Office, we do say go obviously to your school first, work with your teacher, work with the principal, but to deliver on quality we want to make sure that it's easy for the public to know where to go to get help and there's only one phone number to call instead of navigating this giant bureaucracy. You have one number to call, one office and we're here to serve and to deliver on and quality. I want to let folks know we do have that number on our website and we yes. have links to this quality because yes. it's, a ra it's a rather broad center. It's, it's not handle, just about mm -hmm. academia, it's about other things. And and my question is, what about serious issues? Let's say there's bullying. How mm -hmm. would somebody? How would you follow up on if somebody went through the quality uh, assessment? I mean, the uh, quality assurance center. That's a part. One of the reasons we set it up was complaints just just like that. I've actually worked with the district attorney, uh, CPS, and the city attorney on putting in our practices so that if there's a serious claim that could have something criminal in nature, we have a direct link to the multiple agencies so that we're referring and we're investigating, we're responding with credibility and transparency and we 
um, assure quality that way. Well, I have to end on this. We've got about 30 seconds here. So the new discipline policy, some people have called it lax. Tell us, is it lax? How, how is it different? Absolutely not lax. It's about being able to make best decisions around keeping our kids in their learning. There used to be 15 different reasons to suspend a student. We're going with the top five that's by California Ed Code, and we're putting in restorative justice practices around how to keep kids in schools and be, have positive behavior interventions before a student makes a mistake that takes them out of their learning. How do we keep them in their learning and support them. All right, well, we have to wrap it there. School Superintendent Cindy Martin, thank you. Thank you.